Hello and welcome to another Inside EVs video. Today I have a pink Porsche Taycan that we are going to be doing a range test on. This isn't just any normal Porsche Taycan. This is the brand new rear wheel drive Taycan. Let me take you around the spec, the testing procedures, what I'm expecting to find. We're going to run the test and we're going to see how far it goes in our 70 mile per hour loop that we do for every EV here on Inside EVs. Now there are two different versions of the rear wheel drive and it depends on the battery you choose. The smaller battery uh, is EPA rated at 200 miles. I think I'm breaking the news by sharing this. And the big battery is 225 miles EPA. This car is the big battery. This Porsche Taycan is a German spec vehicle, which is so interesting. You'll notice that because it has the clear side markers and the German plates on it, which is great. However, it is almost identical to the US version coming here. This obviously is a pre-production vehicle, but it's very representative of a production rear wheel drive Taycan that you should be able to order at your dealers either now or soon. It's actually just called the Taycan. That's the actual name. It's just the Porsche Taycan. Of course, you can get a 4S with all wheel drive, a turbo and a turbo S above this, and now a soon to be released Cross Turismo with the hatchback. I'm very excited about that. But now we have the ideally ultimate range version. Now I mentioned this is the ultimate range spec Taycan, but I have a bit of a question to pose to you. Let me know what you think in the comments. The Taycan 4S has a two-speed transmission in the rear. Many people think its highway range far exceeds EPA because it runs with the two-speed transmission, but this is actually not true. The reason the car does so well is in EPA, they test the cars in key up settings, which is normal mode. The car runs all wheel drive. In the Taycan 4S, all of our range testing and everything else is always done in range mode. It actually doesn't affect drivability of the vehicle at all. It's still just as fast. But what it does is it tells the car to physically decouple the rear motor and run with the more efficient front wheel drive motor. Now, this particular car, I, you know, most people are saying, oh, it's going to go so much farther than the 4S. I actually didn't think it would because now you can't disconnect the rear motor. You have to run with the two-speed transmission. So this is going to be a super interesting test to see if the two-speed transmission is more efficient without the front motor, essentially the weight savings, or if it's more efficient to carry around that rear motor that's decoupled and run front wheel drive. We have tested a Porsche Taycan 4S in our range test here before, except that car was on the worst possible wheels, the 21-inch giant wheels. And that car did 276. 7.9 miles on a charge in our 70 mile per hour loop test. I'll explain the test in a minute. I am so excited to see what this car gets. The conditions are almost perfect today. So I'm hoping for something close to 300 miles or at least in that 280, 290 range. Let's see what we can do. Our testing procedures go as follows. We fill up the tire pressures to manufacturer suggested rating. We charge the cars on a DC charger up to 100%. The reason I use a DC charger is because it heats up the battery. What I wanna do is have the car not run its thermal management systems for the battery pack while we're driving. And this really doesn't matter on a day like today where it's warm, but especially in colder weather, this really helps uh, warm everything up so we have the most representative results. We also run the cars in range mode or the efficiency setting. In the case of the Taycan, it lowers itself all the way down, backs off the dam, in the case of the all-wheel drive ones, run front-wheel drive. It also backs off some of the AC. But we always use climate control set to the most efficient setting that allows temperature control. Most EVs have some sort of setting where you put everything in super efficient mode and it doesn't let you choose temperature. We don't do that. We always run it so you can have a consistent 68 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit cabin temperature. So that's how we set up the cars and then the driving is fairly simple. We try and find the flattest bit of road so we don't have any heat loss from elevation changes. We run a loop style test so that if we do have a slight uphill, we'll get a slight downhill on the way back. We also counteract wind this way. So we're gonna leave here full and we will only log the end of the mileage when the car is completely dead. I mean like will not move dead. That's how I do range tests. Two reasons, one, a lot of people 
test range based off of predicted miles to empty, like if there's 10 miles left. You can't rely on that because one, the car doesn't really know how much energy for real is left in the battery pack, and two, sometimes there's hidden buffers at the bottom of the battery. We need to use all of it. Um, and then the second reason really is just because I wanna see how far it can go truly, just until it stops moving. It's simple as that. One last benefit of this particular spec before we jump on the road, we're just about to complete, is this one doesn't have the power charge port. The power charge port not only adds that extra weight complexity and aero disadvantage from the latch, you also lose this entire vent. You can see I'm sticking my hand in here. If the car with the power charge port doesn't have this, so I'm not sure what the efficiency hit is, but you can see you can stick your hand all the way through there. And I know that's gonna help at least a percent or two with efficiency. It's gonna make a big difference. So range mode, we're gonna drop the car all the way down, complete it 100% and jump right up to 70 miles per hour heading onto the highway. All right, we're in the Taycan. Let's put the air conditioning on automatic at let's just say 72 to start. It's currently 69 degrees Fahrenheit outside perfect optimal temperatures. We are reversing out of here, back into drive, and off we go. Ooh, interesting, really smooth reverse to drive, more so than the 4S that I've felt uh, during my time with it. Keep in mind, I've done about, I don't know, 10,000 miles in the Taycan in the last eight weeks. <laughs> really been driving a lot in these things and uh, really enjoying them for sure. The rear wheel drive, you know, this isn't the driving review. Head over to my own channel, it's called Out of Spec Reviews, where I'm gonna take this car up into the canyons, in the city and in the mountains, and talk about how this car drives compared to 4S, compared to Turbo and Turbo S, all which I've driven recently. So now, let, let me just reset my trip stuff. It does it automatically, let me just double check check that it is reset. Okay, so let's see, trip, and we're gonna get up to 70 miles an hour. Since charging, there we go, everything's nice and reset. And just in case, we have 3,595 miles on the odometer. Let's just gently accelerate up to 70. The highway is not too far away from here. There we go, we are at 70 miles an hour. When we get on the highway, we're gonna lock it into a absolute 70 mile per hour using the adaptive cruise control, GPS accurate 70, and uh, we're gonna see how far this thing goes until it dies completely. Right now, I have some gauges I can pull up here, which is great how customizable this car is. Uh, we have 100% state of charge. <laughs> Tycons just drive so nice and in range mode which is kind of nice it drops the car all the way down but it backs off the damper so it's actually really smooth and floaty uh, even though you're in the lowest suspension setting it's a really neat neat feature when you put the car in range mode so let's merge onto the highway gentle accelerations you know the the thing is with uh, merging on the highway in these range tests is you don't want to floor it you don't want tons of current draw uh, because you'll have heat loss now I've come out here to the desert I came over the grapevine out of Los Angeles out here to the I-5 because it's almost completely flat. In terms of wind conditions, like I mentioned, we have about a five to six mile per hour head, uh, not headwind, side wind, across side wind. And um, here we are, merging onto the highway. We're gonna take the speed at a little bit of a Porsche pace, shall we? because that way we don't have to speed up or slow down as much. We'll keep things as accurate as possible. This particular one has rear steering, which helps in the corners. And man, nothing else corners like Tycon for being so heavy and so agile. It's truly impressive. Now let's get up to 70 miles per hour. Here we go. 70, locking it in. Boom. Uh, did I lock it in? Yes, I did. I'm gonna confirm with my GPS device that 70 is a true 70. And that's kind of it. I just sit here for the next three, four hours, five hours, however long this takes at 70 going up and down the highway. <laughs> it's a really exciting job, I gotta tell you. We are just about 20% of the way through the drive and I like to always check the stats around 20, 25% of the way through because it gives us a good indication as, what, as to what we can expect the final number to be. Now in some cases it's pretty wrong because of elevation differences, but I've been trying to check the elevation points and it's all pretty much the same elevation all the way uh, through. So this might be pretty accurate and pretty interesting. I don't know how far we've traveled yet, but we are at 80% state of charge. We just ticked down from 81 to 80, so we're on the high side of 80. Let's see how far we have gone. Ooh, 60.8 miles, which means, let me do math real quick, yeah. We're gonna do more than 300 miles in this test. <laughs> I have been waiting for the day I could do 300 on a charge in a Taycan. So here's the thing, I've range tested two different Taycan 4S's 
Uh, the first one did 278, 279 miles, but that one was on the largest possible wheels. The second one I tested was on aero wheels. It was a 4S, uh, but that car had the power charge port, uh, and also it was cold out. It was like 44 degrees, and that car did like 280 miles in 44 degrees, so the wheels really helped. But now we have the rear wheel drive, which EPA rates this just under, but again, nearest makes no difference, the 4S, but in great condition, 65 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit it's going back and forth depending on cloud cover over the Sun uh, almost no wind right here and super flat ground and we are just cruising at uh, just over 300 watt hour per mile 310 watt hour per mile uh, at, at 70 miles an hour <laughs> and I gotta say the Taycan I say this for every range test every time I'm in it it doesn't get old it is a special vehicle uh, something about this car just is physics defying when you drive them fast eats up the miles like nothing has one of the best charging curves of any EV look a Taycan will pretty much do 270 kilowatts from 0 to 50 percent and it still is doing like 150 kilowatts at 75 percent I mean truly great road tripping car especially with plug-in charge on 2021s. Also, a new feature for 2021, since this is the first 2021 we have been in together, uh, there's a feature that you can limit your DC fast charging down from 270 kilowatt peak to 200 kilowatt peak. This will increase life and longevity because you're not stuffing all that current into the battery. And also, sometimes 270 kilowatts is too fast. You just want to go eat, you want to go <laughs> to a Walmart, whatever you got to do, uh, and sometimes it's nice if you're not in a hurry just to protect the battery a bit. Although I will say uh, on that 4S, the gray car that I drove recently, you've all seen because we you know, did the cannonball in it. That car I charged at 270 kilowatts, at least 50 charging stops and it was totally fine and showed almost no degradation by the end of that trip. These things really are tanks and engineered extremely well. Rant over. Love this car. You guys know it. We are just approaching our turnaround point. We have 60% state of charge. I have to duck in here and let's start slowing down for our exit. Uh, really at a perfect run up the I-5 up here. Uh, couldn't have asked for better conditions, uh, better traffic scenario. Right now it's starting to get a little bit more dense traffic, but uh, when really I've just been at 70 the entire time. I think I had to come off 70 and I went down to 68 for like a quarter of a mile and back up to 70. It's really perfect, perfect conditions on the way up. Let's hope it's the same way on the way down. I imagine we can get on the highway over here to the left. I think we can. So let's just go gentle acceleration through here. Oh, what a great road trip car this Taycan is. Now this particular Taycan is not specced with InnoDrive, which is the driver assistance lane centering. It does have a lane departure warning and pushes you back in if you hit the lanes, uh, but it doesn't keep you locked in the middle of the lane like other Taycans I have tested. Um, and that's okay, it's uh, not, not uh, too uh, hard to do that. Driving's pretty easy. <laughs> It does have adaptive cruise control though. There's one of those really neat converted sprinter camper van things by Winnebago. They're called Winnebago Revels. And uh, yeah, I just reviewed an electric Ford Transit that will be coming onto the channel soon. So keep your eyes peeled because we talk about what an electric uh, RV situation would be like. So the reason I'm doing this turnaround at 60% instead of closer to 50% is that the exits are so far apart up here, I don't wanna get caught out. Basically, I wanna make sure that I have the ability to get back to the Electrify America station. So I can at least get back down there with low state of charge and then run up and down the highway that way at 70 miles per hour to really get our uh, tests locked in and everything. And that way I'm not running out on the side of the road by a exit miscalculation, which yes, that has happened on a range test before <laughs> in Florida. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty wild. Anyway, beautiful California views. Uh, great halfway point basically right now just so you know we are averaging 299 watt hour per mile uh, it was a little bit of a downhill down to here so we're going to probably use a little bit more energy on the way up um, man that range mode it's amazing how soft it is when it's in the lowest suspension with range mode really awesome road trip car gorgeous views great day 62 degrees chilled down a little bit but perfect conditions battery temperature is looking at 89 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where Tycon likes to live. Um, it's about as good as, as you can ask for, folks. This is going to be a serious 
serious range test. I don't know what the number will be, if it's 280, 290, or maybe even 300, but either way, this is more than enough range on a full charge for anyone to handle. I kind of already have to uh, take a bio break pee somewhere, but I can't stop. We got to do the test properly. Let's continue. We just got this lovely message that came on the dash. Let's take a look. Are we down to 7%? Let's see. Down to information. 5% state of charge, folks. Almost over. This thing, man, does it just go and go and go. I'm getting tired. Let's see how many miles we've got. 277.4. Damn, that's way surpassing EPA range. So here's the plan. I'm just in the right lane now because we're coming up to our exit here. We are going to pull off the highway at 280 miles or so. Let's just take a look. It's the next exit, 279. I always like to let everyone know when I exit the highway. However, the roads that I'm going to be driving on, I'm going to try and go 70. They're high speed country roads in the middle of these fields. And what I'm going to do is run it until the Tycon shuts off. I know it sounds pretty scary. So here we are exiting the highway 279.5 miles. Uh, that last half a mile I was doing 63 behind that truck just because I didn't think I had room to get past him. Uh, but that is basically as close to 70 mile per hour uh, as you can get, 279.6, and we're at 5% indicated state of charge. But again, that Tycon has that extra buffer if up its sleeve. Let's go to the right here. I'm trying to think about what's the best way to do this. Let's go to the right. There's almost no traffic, and I can just go 70 up and down these back roads. And then I'll let you know when we shut down. We are at 1% state of charge. The EA stations are right up there. We're gonna keep going, like I said, until the Tycon totally shuts off. So just U-turns, U-turns. For the ending bit here, we're gonna take it off of 70, 70 miles an hour. I don't wanna pull too much pack voltage. So let's just say that last one I did at 70. This one we'll do at 55. 289.3 miles at 70. Now we're gonna set it at 55 and run it at 55 until this thing dies. Yep, just cruising down here, 55 miles an hour here in the California. I don't think technically this is the desert, but uh, just running a pink Porsche Taycan all the way down to zero. I can't think uh, many people have done something like this. A pink rear wheel drive Taycan just trying to run it out of battery. That seems pretty silly, doesn't it? <laughs> so while I was hoping to see 300 miles out of this test, I don't think we will. I think we're gonna get extremely close, but um, you know, just a perfect test really. Uh, almost no traffic, just sitting at 70. In, uh, and, and when I say perfect test, perfect for our uh, standardized test that I created with Tom uh, for our 70 mile per hour loop. We have the orange battery icon on, 1% state of charge. <laughs> I love this stuff. 0% state of charge now. Just tick down from 1% to zero. 91 degrees Fahrenheit in the battery pack. We're rolling in nice and low. A way to do it. Now, the reason I run the cars all the way out is so that I don't have to rely on any BMS confusion. It just runs out when the pack's out of voltage. That's the proper way to do a range test. You can't actually rely on that percentage. You can't rely on that miles to empty. They are just, ideally in a test like this, they mean nothing. I mean, uh, yep, yeah, you just gotta go till the car doesn't move anymore. That's the best way. Here we go, Crit critical battery level, park vehicle in a safe place. Okay, oh, but it's still giving us power. Normally, uh, the red comes on when it turns on. We have the turtle mode and a uh, hazard warning light on. I can't remember that ever happening before the vehicle completely dies. Maybe they changed the software on Tycon and I'm just gonna get myself running out completely. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny, wouldn't it? Well, with the critical battery level here, we've made it back to the charger. It took me full throttle to get from over there to here. So I know it's completely dead. I guess Porsche got rid of the shut off and restart for vehicle uh, pa low pack voltage, which is good. It almost caught me off guard because I was kind of waiting for it. But uh, hey, I think that's a great new software change. Uh, maybe it's just for European spec cars. Maybe it's for all of them but uh, definitely made it here. It won't even show me how many miles we did, although I know a way to take a look in the PCM. So let's take a look. 
So the whole trip took four and a half hours. We did 293.3 miles. We averaged 286 watt hour per mile. It shows kilowatt hour per 100 miles. You just move the decimal point. 66 average speed. That was 68 when we pulled off the highway, mostly because I was getting on and off. And then also just cruising up and down these roads, pulled it down. But uh, hey, we are completely out of juice. Let's get this thing plugging in. Look at this thing. It's just pulling 95 kilowatts at 0% right there. This is a charging monster. It's to ramp up of course to 270 kilowatts what a machine to over 290 miles on a car that's epa rated i think at 225 guys i am so impressed with the range on this car you know the epa for whatever reason this car's run through the two cycle the teslas are run through the five you can never match the tesla epa range you can always exceed this even on the cannonball when we were ripping the 4s we were far surpassing epa range uh, to almost 300 miles in the rear wheel drive Taycan, which has less of an EPA rating than the 4S. This is an impressive car. And with this charging curve, no faster road tripper currently on sale that's electric. And we have proven that. I love the Taycan. I am super impressed with this particular build and uh, great work to the Porsche team. That was a lot of driving, <laughs> just sitting there at 70. And uh, yeah, but I'm glad we are able to do it. Let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think of our testing procedures? I think it's the best way to test for highway range. I think 70 is the best compromise speed. I know some people will say, I drive 75 or 80 or 90 if you live in Wyoming. Look, I get it. I just think if we choose a speed, we can replicate 70 in different parts of the world. Uh, it's an easy speed to travel. Uh, it's one that you can do if you are going on a trip. It's not like it's too slow. And uh, let me know what you think about our other procedures. DC charging the cars until they complete and running them until they're completely dead means we're not relying on BMS data. We're not relying on projected miles to empty. We literally drive them till they're empty. I always keep a toe strap with me for these tests just in case I miscalculate. Thanks so much for watching another episode of Inside EVs and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.